imagine yourself older than you are now. Five years, maybe 10, 20, maybe you're 80 or 90 or over 100. And see yourself, see your older self. Now imagine looking back at yourself as you are now. What might your older self, your more mature self, say to you, to your younger self? What words of wisdom might they have for you? I sort of calm myself saying, well, you know, stay one day at a time, you know. But that's what was my reaction. It brought up a lot of fear. Well, anger's a good motivator and when we're old, <laughs> I think. Mm. But uh, Goldie just said to me, she goes, you're, you're, you're letting go of those things that nourish you. Don't let go of them because they're harder to get back. Mm. The older I get, the more calm I get. And I look forward to maybe be getting 90 or something and I have my grand-grandchildren and my dad. I don't think about, you know, uh, what's coming up in my future because so far I feel very good. And Whatever comes, we have to take, I think. You know, and when I really look back, 40 years ago or something like that, I mean, why did I worry so much? For all this stuff, it comes, it comes. I shouldn't have worried, you know. We worry, we have, we worry too much. I felt lucky. <laughs> I felt lucky for this opportunity to take this meditative walk with myself. When my older self talked to my younger self saying, sit down, shut up, and listen. And it made me feel relaxed. My older self told me to relax and that I had plenty more to give. What is fear? How does it, what does it say? <coughs> Better not do that. I, I've been working with a therapist and he would always say, Let's say, you know, I have all this fear, and then his first question would be, what's right about it? Right? Because in some ways, you want to get, a, I like to get away from constantly beating myself up about whatever it is that I'm beating myself up with. So, and if there is an emotion, whether it's fear or whether it's something, somehow it serves a purpose. If you're talking about a spiritual purpose, it has a purpose. All of these elder values that we just talked about, we got to practice that with ourselves. It's hard to be compassionate with other people if you're not with yourself. It's hard to be loving with others if you're not with yourself. So the fears that I experience now, being alone without any family support or any family, is that what I'm facing for the future, in terms of physical issues that may arise in the next 10 or 20 years, however many more years I may have, I will be facing alone. What would you say, would you, what, what, what comes up? So you have this thought, I'm going to be alone. Well, I am alone already. Well, so what, what happens then? What I actually do is um, I get up and get active and start doing something. There we go. So it pushes um, you to I activity. Volunteer. I do have a lot of activities. The gay community should try and find solutions to this. Maybe communal, older home, older people getting together, a big house, and maybe hiring some people, some young people who need jobs. In terms of preparing for it, when we demand affordable housing, we should demand communal housing, not just all these living in your, your own little box. Right. Because we're le we're going nowhere except to, to helplessness. Right. That it, we need to do the fix a little sooner. Yeah, my friends are dying, so I'm cultivating younger friends now, and I cashed out my life insurance. I mean, why do I need to give it to somebody because of a blood relationship? And I bought long-term care insurance so that somebody can come in my home. As far as the commune thing, uh, that would work if somebody's just disabled. But if they have severe dementia, it gets dangerous, you know. And I don't think the people who are just moving in would be really ready for the kind of care you have to provide. <laughs> you know, we're dealing with all the various issues now that have to do a little bit more with the practical side, right? I think actually what would be great is to to have these kinds of groups on an ongoing basis that actually just talk with what is it like 
you know, hi, my name is, you know, Nader, and I'm so and so mature, and you know, we can out ourselves that we're dealing with the issue of maturation and aging, whatever you want to call it, and an increased uh, uh, immobility and so forth. So that I think will be a, a way to even begin the dialogue rather than pretend that it just keeps going on nicely and then we tip over. Thank you very, very, very much for your participation today.